our hearts may it be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your light be shown. Amen. Whom will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. How many people have that as number of the top five favorite hymns? Okay, there's a few. Do you know why? Have you thought about why it's your favorite hymn? Like the tune? I think it has something to do for me. It has to do with this call and response. That sense of the promises of God and then all that question that, that sort of tugs and draws us out. Whom shall I send? I remember Malcolm saying to the choir at practice one time, you really need to think about this as a response. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. It's a wonderful hymn. But think about it. What if it was reversed? What if it's you calling out to God? And that's not that far of a stretch because there are times that we call and long to hear the voice and feel the presence of our God. And how wonderful it is when we hear those words, Here I am. Also moments that we don't hear that voice, that there is silence. There's a call and answer, and if it's reversed and we don't hear the voice, there is something that is missing. I want to talk to you this morning about three communities. The first one is after the exile. It's a part of what is called Third Isaiah, and it happens after they have returned, after they have started to rebuild, after they've started to uh, become a nation once again. And it's actually a fairly stable time in the nation, in the history of Israel. They have come back. There was they, there was a lot of poverty. The economy was certainly bad, but things are improving. Now, one of the things that happens during this time, the intertestamental time especially, is that there is a move away, or a beginning of the move away from the temple worship to synagogue worship, to small group or, or, or house worship, in which people, at least ten in, in Jewish faith, ten men, could get together and form a synagogue. And there they would learn, they would praise, they would fast, they would listen closely for the voice of God. And the temple becomes a dominant part again, and it's part of nationalizing, and it's part of sort of having a symbol that, that is important for the nation. However, it tends to detract from some of that sense of that intimacy that comes through uh, synagogue or small group worship. And this is, and you hear in the passage, yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways. They're in the temple, they're in the place of worship day after day. They ask for righteous judgments and they delight to draw near to God. Well, one of the things that we know is that this, in this community and in most communities, so we're talking about three of them. But in most communities, although we talk about the sense of being delighting in the presence of God, when our faith and actions are balanced, there's often an imbalance. We may delight in worshiping God, but our lives and our actions don't quite match up to that. So 3rd Isaiah says, Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. A trumpet was to summon all of the young men to war, to battle. The call of the trumpet. The people have forgotten. The 
people do not hear God. Why do we fast and you do not see? Why do we serve our... Well, because you serve your own interest, you oppress your workers, is what the prophet says. And then, like the bumper, Old Testament bumper sticker line from Micah, this is even a little more clear. Yeah. It's not the fast I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, the thongs of the oak, the oppressed go free to break every yoke. To share bread with the hungry, bring the homeless poor to the house, and when you see the naked, to cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin. There's a whole list of things that if you are really children of the covenant, this is what will happen when your light shines. Your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Because Israel was always meant to be a blessing to the nations. It was meant to be a blessing to others, to show the light, the salt, and to become a, a people who bring health and healing and wellness to everyone around. Now verse 9 is an interesting verse. It says, Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, Here I am. And that's why I chose here I am for today. The problem is, and I have a problem with this passage. The problem is, is you mean that we don't do this stuff and we call the Lord won't answer? If our faith and our action, our faith and our life, our worship and what we do aren't in sync, aren't balanced, then I don't think we can be attuned to the presence of God. It's not that God isn't there, and it's not that God is not calling and speaking, it's that we can't hear. There needs to be balance in our lives in order to hear. The second community that I want to talk about is Matthew's community. Matthew's community uh, is around 80 to 90 AD, or CE, the Christian era. And it's written after the Jewish war, the rebellion and the war in which the temple is destroyed, and there's a dispersion and a persecution, a wide persecution of both the Jewish of people and the Christians. And within this context, within the context of being dispersed throughout the Roman Empire, it seems as if the community is living in end times, apocalyptic times. It's around the same time Eusebius blows. So I mean, it's one of those things that they're, they're saying that the kingdom of heaven is close. Be light. Be salt. They are called to embody all those things in the Sermon on the Mount that turns upside down everything that they perceived and understood about being in right relationship with God and with others. It's changed forever. And they're called to let that light shine. And then the third community, our community. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in, our, in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. The reading for today imply two fundamental questions of life. Who are we? And what are we to do? I mean, these questions hang in the back closets of our minds and of con individuals and of congregations and of communities. I mean, the situation in Matthew's congregation is analogous to that of so many places of worship today. Matthew lived in a 
time of theological and social tension following the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, and the Jewish community was in conflict regarding the future of Judaism, just as the Christians were trying to work out what it means to be light to the world. Matthew begins with that image of salt, and, and we usually think of salt as being, I know I have high blood pressure, so it's not supposed to have, it's bad for you. But salt is a symbol of covenant. It's necessary. It's believed that community was living within an apocalyptic,
Jesus encourages his followers, followers to bring light to a dark and broken world. Archbishop William Temple is often quoted as saying, the church is the only organization on earth that exists for those who are not its members. That's our history as, a, as the Jewish people, to be a blessing. In order for the light to be seen, we must be willing to go where the darkness exists, to engage and walk through it so that in time the light can overcome. Annie Gilliard writes, you do not have to sit outside 